Well, good evening, Northridge. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Our God is worthy to be praised. We are so glad you decided to join us tonight for worship night. Tonight is a special night. It's a special night because you're here to worship with us. But more importantly, the King of Kings is here. Come on, let's make some noise for Jesus. Tonight is gonna be an amazing night where we commune and connect with God. And so typically, you come and we sing songs and we lift up the name of Jesus and then you leave. But tonight, I want you to think of tonight as a prayer night, a night specifically designed for you to connect with God in the most intimate way. And we encourage you to sing, to pray, to worship our Father, our Heavenly Father. And it is our prayer and our hope that he'll meet you right, right where you are. So we've come with great expectation. We've prayed, we've prepared, and now we worship. Won't you stand with us? Jesus, we love you. We exalt you. You are worthy of all praise, of all adoration, and all glory. So this night, our worship, our praise, our prayer is to you. It's for you. It's all about you. worship to sing tonight. Come on. Let's lift it up one more time. I love you, Lord. Come on, let's be one big choir. And I lift my
so awesome that our Abba Father didn't just leave us out here on our own. He taught us how to pray. We're gonna read that together from Matthew 6. It says, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
told you earlier tonight is a night for you to connect with God through the power of prayer and communion with his spirit. And throughout the night, we have our Northridge prayer team who will be down here at the front. And if you'd like someone to connect with you during worship night, during the service, they are here and available for you. You can just come out of your seat during the song. You don't have to wait for a special invitation. They are here, ready and willing to pray and to connect with you. And tonight is a night where you can bring all your worries, all your burdens, bring them to the altar because the great fixer is the only one who can do it. Amen. Amen. So as we continue to worship, feel free. This is your invitation. They're here willing and waiting. Jesus, this is a house of miracles. 
Just to dwell, dwell, dwell here forever. This will be my passion, laying at your feet. Oh, just to dwell, dwell, dwell here forever. Dearest Father, closest friend, most beautiful. Most beautiful, you are, dearest Father, closest friend, most beautiful, most beautiful. One thing I desire, only this I see, just to dwell.
Moses' friend Most beautiful Most beautiful Most beautiful Dearest Father Dearest Father Closest friend Closest friend told you is prayer and connecting with our dearest father as we just sang. He's a good, good father. He sits closer than a brother. And we call him friend, but we also call him father. And so Pastor Andrew is going to come before us and he's going to share some words with you to encourage you, to inspire you on a deeper level to connect with Abba Father. Thanks, Evan. You guys can have a seat for a few minutes. Oh, man, I am so thankful for this team, so thankful for this opportunity to get to be here tonight, aren't you? What an amazing thing to get to be here, and, and I just love the environment of praise and worship in this place tonight. And, as Evan mentioned at the beginning, tonight we really want to put a special focus and, and emphasis on prayer. And uh, prayer is one of those things that, that we know a little bit about. We've learned about it. A lot of us do pray. 
but I want us for just a few minutes tonight to reflect on what's actually happening when we're praying. Prayer is communicating with God, and I think that we would just agree with that definition and we could just move on, but I actually want us to pause right there for a second. Prayer is communicating with God. Almighty, all-knowing, all-present God. But communicating is kind of a funny thing. I mean, from an early age, we all learned that we actually need to change how we communicate, depending on the environment that we're in or even the person that we're communicating with. Like, for example, if you had your phone right now and you got a phone call and you didn't recognize the number on the screen, how would you respond? Hope they leave a message. Now, what, what if your boss calls you? It's a little bit different. You're more likely to pick that phone call up, probably. But it's gonna be more formal, right? It's gonna be formal, it's gonna be very, yes sir, right on that sir, I'll get that done, we can circle back on that next week, sir. Now, what if you're on the phone with somebody from customer service? Oh, now that's different, right? Our ego starts to come out a little bit. We start to get a little demanding. We now have these expectations that they are going to meet our expectations. And if they don't, watch out. We're gonna talk to your manager. <laughs> but what about that person that you just think is the coolest? And you would love nothing more than to just like hang out with them and spend some time with them. It's like, hey man, yeah, what's going on? Um, yeah, yeah, that thing that you, you love to do and that I know absolutely zero about, yeah, we should absolutely do that together sometime soon, right? I want you to kind of compare those responses to what you do when the person that you are closest to in life calls you. There's no performing there. There's no pretending. They already know who you are. You're not demanding. Your relationship with them is built on love for each other. It's not formal. <laughs> you guys moved past that a long time ago. And you definitely pick up the phone because you just love to talk to them. I wonder what your prayer life tonight, I wonder what it says how you communicate with God about how you see your relationship with Him. You feel like you have to perform? Like you have to say all the right words? Do you come to Him with like a laundry list of things? You're like, God, this is the stuff that I need you to do for me. Do you only come to Him when you need something? What's your prayer life like right now? And what does it say about how you view your relationship with God? Now, we sang a song a few minutes ago called House of Miracles, and I'm gonna read a passage to you real quick from Galatians 4, but there's a connection that I want you to see here that Paul makes that's really significant for the moment we're in tonight. I mean, Paul's a great example when it comes to prayer. And he wrote in Galatians 4, it says, when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law, and God sent him to buy freedom for us because we were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us as his very own children. And because we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, prompting us to call out, Abba, Father. Maybe you were somebody tonight that had a little bit of a hard time with that House of Miracles song. Maybe you just like don't believe it. Maybe you just don't believe it for you. But I want you to understand and recognize tonight that According to what Paul says here, this is a house of miracles because for those of us that have put our faith and our trust in Jesus Christ, 
the miracle of the living almighty God coming in and dwelling us right here, right now is reality. And that's a miracle that we are a testimony to tonight. And so Paul says, and so now we're, we're his children. And because we have his spirit, we have that spirit of adoption, we call out, Abba, Father. Now, maybe you're familiar with that word, Abba, maybe you're not. It's an Aramaic word that came from that Jewish culture of that time. And it's the common word that children would use, the name they would use for their father. So you might go, that's weird. Uh, why would Paul basically say the same word twice there? Well, it's because Abba has a very significant relational meaning. You see, Abba carries this understanding and recognition of the intimacy and the closeness that exists with a child and their father, while at the same time communicating and recognizing the trust that a child has in their father. Now, I'm a father, I have three kids of my own, and I remember when our oldest was just getting old enough to enjoy the swimming pool. And I had the experience that probably most of the parents in here have had where she was standing at the edge of the pool and I was standing in the pool saying, come on, jump in, I'll catch you. And she stood there and she got straight and she shook her head, no, not doing it. I said, no, come on, it'll be awesome, it'll be fun. Trust me, I love you, jump in. Nope, not doing it. She was scared. I said, okay, it's cool. We'll keep trying. And then finally, one day, she actually responded yes to that invitation and jumped in, and I caught her. And it was awesome. And you know what happened after that? She wore me out jumping into that pool. When she learned she could trust her dad, her fear went away. And I wonder for us tonight, do we understand that we have a heavenly father that intimately knows us more than we know ourselves? That he has demonstrated his love for us so we can trust him. You can trust him. You can actually come to him in prayer and he, Dad, I... I don't know, I know what you've asked me to do, but if I'm being honest, I am terrified. And he'll say, I know, I love you, trust me. It's dad, I, I messed up again and I just, I don't think it matters anymore. He'll say, I know, and I still love you, trust me. It still matters to me because you still matter to me. Dad, I, th I thought you were gonna come through for me. And he'll say, I know. But know that I love you. Trust me that I am coming through for you in all of the ways you most need me to. You can come to him in prayer and you say, Dad, this is awesome, I am so thankful. And he'll say, I know, I love you. Trust me, keep walking with me. You say, Dad, I, today's tough, I just need you. And he'll say, I know, I love you. Trust me that I am more than enough because he is the father that meets us in the valley. He is the father of our joy on top of the mountain. And he's the father that we need in the walking in between. So because we are his children, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, prompting us to call out, Abba, Father. Tonight, Let's make these songs a prayer to our good Father.
got nothing to lose There's no reason to fear Cause I've got nothing to prove to you Just as I am, I come into your arms, I run. But with the blood of your only son, now and forever.
How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. How beautiful a night like tonight, a worship night, where we can join together as one voice, one collective voice to praise our Father. Isn't it beautiful to be in this place, to be lifting up with one voice? But this is also a room full of hundreds and hundreds of unique voices, your voice, your heart's cry, your unique circumstances, your unique situations. So we're just gonna take the next few moments. We're just gonna have a time of prayer. And you're gonna have a time to, to lift up your heart's cry. Whatever that is within you, you can do it out loud, you can do it in your heart, whatever that looks like. But maybe your heart's cry today is joy and thanksgiving. And maybe your heart's cry is pain and sorrow, and doubt. But as we lift up our prayers to him, he hears them, and he is delighted in our prayers and in our worship to him. So can we just take the next few moments and lift up our heart's cry to him in this place?
is how I fight my battles. Oh, this is how I fight my battles. We believe that this is how I fight my battles. Thank you for the blood of your son. Cause this is how I fight my battles. How I find my path. Oh, this is how I find my path. You're so good, you're so good. Oh, this is how I find my path. We lift our voices. Oh, this is how I find my path. Oh, this is how. And it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. We believe. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm just gonna keep seeing that right now. I've nothing else fit for a king 
Set for a heart singing Hallelujah Hallelujah Oh Thank you, thank you, thank you Come on my son, oh don't you get shy on me Lift up your son, cause you got a lion inside of those lungs Get up and praise the Lord oh. Come on my son, oh don't you get shy on me Lift up your son, cause you got a lion for you. Take heart in deserts and gardens. 
You guys ready to go home? What do you believe in God for this season? I've seen God heal, I've seen him save, and I've seen him deliver firsthand in my life. And in this next season of my life, I am trusting him to do it again. I'm believing that God is going to do something amazing with my three kids and use me as a tool for that. And that someday they're going to spread the gospel and be strong men of God that are gonna help others come to know Jesus and wake the world up. I am believing God to restore the joy of my salvation. Like it says in Psalm 51, 12, that God would restore the joy of my salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me because I feel like the last three years has been really difficult and I, I feel like I just can't shake it off. And then this last year, losing my dad, it's just been a really tough season. So I'm just praying that God will restore my joy and give me a willing spirit to participate in him restoring that to me. I know God's word says to fear not over and over and over stories. He says, fear not, fear not, fear not. So what I'm believing for him to do is to give me the tools and the ability to not fear. I'm believing God for so many things, but I think one of the biggest thing is just protection uh, for my kids or, you know, the youth in general of this generation. Um, they're being so affected by social media and <clears throat> all of these other forces that um, are preaching to them something opposite of what we believe. And um, just trying to keep them focused on God and keep them focused on the word and what we believe is so tough because they spend so much time outside of the home and with uh, people who are pushing a different agenda. So I'm just believing that God will protect them, protect their minds, and keep their hearts tender toward them and keep their minds focused on Him. I'm believing in God for direction right now, for guidance, um, for, for answers for certain prayers that I've had over like even the last couple of years. And I think part of it, I, I'm really longing for, so in a way, like believing for it, but longing for it is uh, seeing his church just explode, like seeing revival at Northridge, seeing revival in our families and in our communities. And, um, and I, I'm, I'm really longing for that. So that's what I would say I'm believing in God for, his promises to his church, uh, to his people, to me, to my family, and uh, just believing in uh, him keeping his promises.
myself. Did you enjoy yourself in the Lord tonight? God, we thank you for your presence. When we come with great expectations and our hearts fill with expectancy for what the Lord is going to do, he 
always meets us and he always honors his word. And so tonight, because we've been telling you all night that this is a house of worship, this is a house of prayer, we're gonna continue in this atmosphere of prayer. So as you leave, please leave with prayer in mind and something super awesome happened while we were in here. So our wonderful team here at Northridge has ch turned 16th Central and the whole church into a prayer room. And so as you're leaving, feel free to go out into 16th Central and continue praying. But our pastor Brad has given us some specific things that he'd like us to pray for. So throughout the service, we've been praying inward about our things and our concerns. And so now it's time to turn that prayer outward and to pray for others and to pray for the ministry. So I'm gonna give you um, a few things to pray for. So first be praying for our prison ministries. Yeah, they're doing a wonderful and a powerful work. Be praying for the glory of Christmas because you know that's coming up that people will be invited that have never come before. It's our biggest outreach we do here at the church. Um, be praying for the next generation, our student ministries, rich kids and all the wonderful work they're doing. Pray for love runs, marathons coming up, and continue to pray for our weekend services that people will come to worship and to know more about Jesus. We're in the series Upside Down, and Brad is really bringing home the truth of the Bible in this series. So be praying for those things. We love you. As always, the prayer team will continue to be down front. If you were too scared to come down during service, please feel free to come down to let someone connect with you. And remember, this is a house of worship, and this is a house of prayer. And remember, if you brought kids tonight, you need to pick them up in five minutes because those people want to go home, okay? <laughs> we love you. God bless you. We'll see you next time. <laughs>